So when the rotator cuff is torn, the patient can experience anything from pain at rest, pain at night, or pain with activities. If the tear involved a supraspinous tendon, typically the patient will have pain with lifting the shoulder and certain range of motion. If the tear involves supraspinous tendon, infraspinous tendon, and teres minors, what we classify as larger tear, the patient will have weakness, and they have difficulty lifting a shoulder, and they will have what we call external rotation leg, which means they can't hold their arm in external rotation. If the tear involves the subscapular muscle tendon in the front, and that's typically involved with a traumatic injury when the patient dislocates shoulder, then they'll have difficulty with internal rotation, weakness, and they may or may not have difficulty with lifting the shoulder. Somebody who falls on their shoulder can tear the rotator cuff. Somebody who are in their 60s, 70s can have attritional changes in the rotator cuff tendon, and it can tear over time and progressing from it says onset, no history of trauma, the tear can get from a partial tear to a full thickness tear. It's important to treat a rotator cuff tear because when you have a tear of a certain size, say one centimeter, over time the tear can get bigger. And at some point, depending how many years down the road, three, four, five years, there becomes a point where the rotator cuff can't be uh, fixed. So it's important to address it uh, early. And at some point when they're not repairable, then the difference is that the operation changes to something called shoulder replacement, when we had to replace the shoulder with a reverse shoulder uh, arthroplasty. So with the rotator cuff tear, uh, it depends on the patient's uh, symptoms. They have pain, or they have weakness, or loss of function. If they have pain, what happens is they can't sleep at night. They'll be waking up periodically throughout the night when they lay on the shoulder. Or if they have pain with range of motion or activities, they try to lift the shoulder up, and they can't do it because the pain limits them to do that. And activities they daily living, anything reaching above the shelf, going to get the dishes, they have a very difficult time doing that. If they have weakness with a large tear, then the patient will have complete loss function in the arm. They can't lift it more than 20, 30 degrees. They have very, uh, very weak difficulty lifting anything more than five pounds, and that can limit them either from their jobs or even just doing uh, normal daily activity, uh, things like brushing your teeth or going, uh, brushing your hair and uh, doing your hair in the back. Majority of the surgeons will do this arthroscopically, minimal wasted through a scope. And what we do is we create three to four little incisions about one centimeter length in your shoulder. We view it from the camera and then we work through portals and also cannulas and then we fix the rotator cuff with anchors, which are anchored to the bone itself. And the sutures are passed from the anchor to the rotator cuff. And these sutures I tie down, basically reducing the rotator cuff back to the footprint and then tying it down. In the younger patient who had an acute injury that tears the rotator cuff, either from a dislocation or a fall, those patients that have a loss of function of pain need surgery to repair the rotator cuff because if you wait too long, the cuff tear will get bigger and become very difficult to fix. The subset of patients that are older in their 60s, 70s, my recommendation is that they start with physical therapy plus or minus injection and anti inflammatory medications. 80% of the patient would do very well with this treatment and they would never need surgery. If the patient has persistent pain, difficulty lifting arm, weakness, after a trial, a three to six months of concern management, and those are the patients that personally I would indicate for surgery. After the rotator cuff repair, the patient will be in a sling for six weeks. They'll start physical therapy anywhere between week two to week uh, four, depending on the size of the tear and the, and the quality of repair at the time of the surgery. After that, the patient will go to physical therapy about three to four months. They'll do self-directed therapy at home. They'll work on range of motion as well as strengthening. And I tell all my patients that it takes about nine months to 12 months for a full recovery after rotator cuff repair where you can gain regain your function fully and also range of motion. It's a very long recovery and uh, that's the expectations after the surgery.